I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. He bathed my heart in love, and He wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now that's an old song and a very basic testimony sang. And it's a good, a good lesson for us, a good example for us if we're not comfortable sharing testimony. Maybe we never tried sharing testimony before. And that's a basic pattern to follow. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. The Holy Spirit came to live inside of my heart at the point where I surrendered and put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I turned away from my sin to follow Him. In return, He gave me peace and He gave me new life. Praise the Lord. Now, the most important part is praise the Lord because He deserves all honor, glory, and praise. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. So if we're pretending to be a good person or we want to be praised for being a good person, that's not the truth of our testimony. The truth is we were sinful, we were evil, horrible, despicable, and the Lord cleansed us and gave us new life. And so the Bible comes against cowardice very clearly in several areas and in just one example revelation 21 8 but as for the cowardly the faithless and dot 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 several other things listed here their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur which is the second death so the lord does not honor he does not support cowardice and we are called to step up and be men Right? Men in the spiritual sense, what the Lord's called a man to be in His Word. And that means taking responsibility for our actions. So we're to carry our crosses. He who does not bear, bear His cross, take up and carry His cross, or bear His cross, is not worthy of me, Jesus said. So that's a big thing. That's a big, big responsibility for us. Because those of us who struggle with same-sex attraction, if we've lived in a dark, dark, dark place before and done a lot of bad things, it's difficult for us to, to humble ourselves enough to share with others um, what we were and what the Lord's done for us, so that they can see the resurrecting power of Jesus Christ in our lives. We come up with a lot of excuses, and we'll talk about those in a moment. From Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 and then we'll jump down to verse 11 and the great dragon was thrown down that ancient serpent who is called the devil and satan the deceiver of the whole world wow the deceiver of the whole world the bible says he can appear as an angel of light he's the god of this world the prince of the power of the air he was thrown down to earth and his angels were thrown down with him the bible says that he's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour he's the enemy of our souls now let's jump down to verse 11. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So followers of Jesus, believers in Jesus, have conquered Satan by the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus Christ, the finished work at Calvary, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, gave us victory over sin and death that we need to claim in our testimony, right? The word of their testimony, for they loved not their lives even unto death. Wow, those sound like really strong believers, right? They loved not their lives even unto death. So they truly had given their lives to Christ, not just figuratively, but truly had given their lives to Him. Now that sounds like, wow, they're really exceptional believers, but the Bible says that our reasonable service is to give our bodies a living sacrifice to the Lord, right? So that shouldn't be the exception. They shouldn't be superstar believers. They should just be... Regular believers, like all of us, should be in the same boat where that's concerned, right? So, we come up with an awful lot of excuses for why we can't, or we, we don't think we can, or we don't want to share testimony. And one of them that's common, I think, is, I don't feel equipped. I've never done it before. So we just gave an example of a, a clean testimony, a pretty simple, basic one. Philippians 4.13, the Lord comes, comes against that with, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So the Word of God comes against that excuse. And Joshua 1.9, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Bible says He'll never leave us or forsake us. It comes against fear in so many different passages. 
do not fear, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. So the Lord will take care of us, right? We focus on heaven, we know our citizenship is there, the Lord meets our needs. We seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things are added to us. He protects us, he provides for us daily, right? What if we think, hey, I'm, I'm, not a very, I'm not a very faithful believer because I stumbled last month. Well, the good thing, the Lord can provide accountability as we, as we step out and risk it all to follow Jesus. We're fully committed, then the Lord can provide some accountability through that. If we're sharing testimony with folks, then they're going to be watching us to see if we're bearing fruit. If we're, if we're showing love, joy, and peace, for example, if we're... Um, ambassadors for Jesus were all that people can see and touch and feel down here. So somebody who doesn't believe in Jesus, for example, they're looking at us for excuses to continue not believing in Jesus sometimes if they're, if they're kind of headed that direction. And hopefully, eventually, their, their hearts will be softened and they'll see the Lord in us day after day more and more as the Lord reveals and hopefully we'll, they'll be interested in knowing Jesus themselves. So we, we should... Walk worthy of the call because we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. We must walk worthy of the call. So it really reiterates. It, it kind of comes back full circle. We, we jump out into the, into the arms of Jesus. We trust Him for everything. We start sharing what He's done for us and sharing that we're set free from sin and death by His power. And our testimony claims that we're set free. We've been purchased from the kingdom of darkness, transferred to the kingdom of light. And then through that, the Lord brings some accountability to help us to grow to be stronger believers and stay in the Word daily, because that's, that's our power source, to stay in prayer and fellowship with Jesus, to stay in community of, of um, every week. And so money can be another one, another excuse. We can't serve God in money. The Bible says we'll hate the one and love the other. The Bible says, what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? So Jesus has to be first in our lives above anything. Nothing else can, can matter. Unbelief. This is the biggest one. So at the root of, of reasons, typically reasons and justifications we're trying to find for not doing what the Lord's called us to do, at the root of those is typically unbelief. The reason is that we don't believe what the Bible says. We don't believe the promises of God fully or else we would put some action behind following Him. And so, unbelief, the best defense against that is Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And we can also pray, Lord, please help my unbelief. But the best defense really against unbelief is faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. It's to say in the Word daily. So, at the end of all this, we really come to a conclusion here. And it's like, wow, okay, this is kind of interesting because... I'm an ex-gay, so I've turned away from that life to follow Jesus, and sometimes I feel like, hmm, maybe I should be doing things in the flesh to try to be an Arnold Schwarzenegger, to try to get into a lot of, a lot of really manly things, and I think sometimes there is value in that as the Lord leads, but here, what, what this is coming back to is, hey, step up and be a man, do something that people don't have the guts to do overall, right? This is a big, big, big step. And the Lord's calling us to do it as part of our reasonable service. Not as, not as a big, big, over and above kind of thing, but just as our reasonable service as we're followers of Jesus. If we're true followers, then we'll do it. He's saying, if you don't take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. So step up today and be a man. Share Christ with somebody. Follow Jesus fully committed. It won't be easy. You'll be persecuted. We're in this together. We need to walk worthy of the call and do the best we can. When we stumble a bit, we wake up the next day. We know the Lord's mercies are new every day. We, we ask for forgiveness. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Say in the fight, soldier, be a man and step up today. Share Christ with somebody. He's worth it. He gave all for us. Jesus paid it all. All to Him we owe.